I am honored to be invited back again. I've learned that when you're invited back, that usually says something about your first occasion. So thank you for inviting me back again. Um, to all of those who made this event possible, thank you. Uh, to those members of the General Assembly who have, uh, are here in attendance today, thank you for a great session. And for the rest of you who are sitting at uh, tables that apparently are sponsored by folks that have frequented the third floor of the Capitol in recent months, I think the media refers to those folks as lobbyists. <laughs> I'm sure that we will see a financial disclosure disclosing what your, for, your portion of the cost of your table was <laughs> in the very near future. I want to thank the press for several things. One is, I want to thank most of you for using a fairly decent picture of me. <laughs> you would not believe how irritated somebody can get when the only picture that ever shows up in the media is one of those where you have your contorted face as you're answering some question and they just catch you right in, in that pose. Thank you for using a pretty good picture, but you're going to have to do a better job. Let me tell you why. Some of you have heard me tell this true story. It happened to me several weeks ago. Uh, I had been to an event south of Atlanta and I was rushing back for something at the Capitol and it was right around lunchtime. I hadn't had lunch, so I said, let's just pull off of the interstate over here and go to McDonald's and get something to eat. So we did. I walk in the front door, and I walk up to the young lady behind the counter, and uh, she, she looks at me and smiles, and she says, uh, well, Governor, may I help you? And I said, oh, I am amazed that you know who I am. And she laughed, and she said, yes, I keep up with those kind of things. <laughs> and I said, well, that's very impressive that you would do so. Well, another young lady behind the counter, she hears this conversation, so she leans over to the first young lady and she says, Who is he? And she says, Governor Purdue. <laughs> so y'all got to do a better job now. <laughs> I thought what I'd do today is to talk with you about some of the events that occurred and the accomplishments of this session of the General Assembly. First of all, we got through uh, before the end of March, which is a huge accomplishment. And I, I thank the leadership of both houses for agreeing to do that. Uh, but we gave them an incentive. We were laughing about it here at our table just a few minutes ago. If any of you came into the Capitol uh, on the week following the adjournment of the General Assembly, you know what I'm talking about. We had entered into a contract for a filming studio to film a television series. I'm told that it's probably going to be called Revolution, and it was set in the, uh, in the foyer area there of the uh, second floor of, of the Capitol, and it was 20 years in the future after Armageddon. And it, the, uh, I think the director was the director who uh, directed the uh, television series Lost. So it has some rather high profile, we think. But uh, they said, well, you know, we've got to test out our torches. I said, torches? <laughs> what kind of torches? And they said, well, after Armageddon, you won't have any electricity. So we're going to set it up with these huge torches. Well, sure enough, they did. It, was, uh, it really truly was a frightening scene uh, to see that. It, uh, we, we have jokingly said at our table that maybe we need to schedule all of those every year so that we have a deadline that they had to get out because they literally moved in within a few hours of the adjournment of the General Assembly at midnight that night. So uh, it's been an interesting time around the Capitol. It's almost back to normal now. I think they've got everything fixed up. But we made you some money in the process, and uh, that's what we are trying to do is to make sure we use uh, your taxpayer dollars wisely. <clears throat> um, I think, too, uh, probably the crowning achievement of this session of the General Assembly was that we were able to pass what I consider to be historic legislation, and we did so in a almost total bipartisan fashion. Now, I know some of you have downplayed the fact that it was not a significant tax reform package. I challenge you to say whether or not you think we could have done that in any other circumstances. I don't think we could. Uh, 
I know that some people, and you have written very favorably about uh, the criminal justice reform package, and I do think that is also historic. We did so by building consensus rather than confrontation. And when there were differences, we tried to work out those differences. When there were legitimate reasons for doing something a little different than our original format, uh, we tried to accommodate those legitimate reasons if they had merit. I believe that's the way we should try to govern, and we tried to do it. And I think it was an excellent example of this session of the General Assembly to say that you could pass those two rather historic pieces of legislation, in some cases unanimously, and in every case with virtually almost no dissenting votes. Now that takes a lot of work. It sounds easy on the surface, but it takes a lot of work. It takes work by staff people, it takes work by lobbyists, it takes work by people who are involved in the process and working with a common purpose in mind to do what is best for the state of Georgia. And uh, I think it is truly remarkable. But in both instances, I would remind you, we laid the foundation by asking the people of the state of Georgia for their input. The uh, Tax Reform Council had actually preceded and predated my becoming governor. Much of what came out of that package was a result of their efforts. We followed it up the preceding year, uh, preceding this session, with the Competitiveness Initiative, which was business leaders from all across the state holding town hall type meetings in all 12 regions of the state asking the citizens of the state of Georgia, what do you think the state needs to do to be more competitive? And several themes came out of that. One that involved the tax reform, which we incorporated in the legislation this year. The other, improve education. And that's something we're constantly working on in our administration. And I know the General Assembly continues to share that goal.